podcast, though, our next guest is no stranger to fame. Since the age of 17, she's been on our screens and last year came runner-up on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. But behind the smiles and the jokes, Emily Atak was dealing with depression and struggling to come to terms with stardom, all of which she has decided to speak about in her new book, Are We There Yet? And this is the book here. Look and you. she's here. Hello. It's lovely, lovely to see you. Why, why put this all in a book? Why was this the time to well, do it? I've, I've really kind of noticed in myself that I... And people say this to me a lot. I speak a lot about how I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, I can't help but just kind of spill everything out. And that's, that's kind of... It's kind of a good thing, I guess. And I thought, well, why not kind of just write it all in a book and then everyone can have a... Good old read. Well, you've been yeah. quite honest, cos you've talked about family things, your parents' mm. divorce, that sort of stuff is all in the book and the effect it had on you. Um, so you assume you went to them and said, what can I put in? Yeah, well, I mean, they're all terrified. But, <laughs> um, and it was so funny, the first copy that, um, that I did, everyone was like, you can't put that in! Because, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just very honest about things. And growing up, you know, it was, it, it was, it was chaotic. You know, we, I lived in a um, freelance entertainment household, but it was really good fun. And I was smothered with love. And yeah. there's just so much, there's so much to tell there. You know, I didn't, I didn't have the kind of regular upbringing like other everyone. I mean, there is no regular. Well, it's a quite you know, a show, way, it's a showbiz um, household, isn't it? Yeah. You know, sort of just a bunch of show off. Mum, actress, <laughs> dad, music, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, if um, if you'd sort of describe that household, does it, does it feel? Did it feel like showbiz at the time? No. I mean, I thought it was completely normal to come home and Les Dennis is sat on my uniform, you know. Right. Like, Sorry, can I just...? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was... That was normal for me, but I was, I was proud of it because I knew it was different. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, my friends, it was all kind of like... It, it, we, they used to pile at my house and that everyone would sort of be guessing at who would be there. And... The neighbours <laughs> the neighbors looking at the car in the drive. Oh, my, oh yeah, so, right, this, this is an actual true story, so... Um, my mum and dad were having a party one night and um, my neighbour comes storming in and he said, whose gold Bentley is that on my drive? Get, you know, get rid of it. And Des O'Connor just, like, pokes his head around and he's like... <laughs> it's mine! <laughs> yeah. Um, so stuff like that just happened all the time. And yeah. so do you think because you had this sort of... And, you know, from an outside, other kids of your age must have looked at you and there must have been a bit of jealousy there because you've also spoken about sort of at school being bullied and the impact that that had yeah, on you. Yeah, I think when you look back at... If you've been through some kind, of, some kind of bullying, I don't think at the time even... Some bullies know they're bullies, but I don't think everybody always kind of knows at the mm. time the impact that that's having on yeah. somebody. Really, though, with uh, you? Do, I because mean... Because what they did to you... With, yeah. uh, with the posters and the phone number. Yeah, so, so they, they stuck a photo up of me around... Um, God, it's so, it's so weird, like, talking about all this now, cos I haven't talked about it in such a long time, but, oh, it still freaks me out. They, they put this poster up of my face um, around some of the villages and they put my number on it and so that everybody could prank call me and, you Why? know... Well, I think people think that's funny. People think they're being funny. People, you know... I, I've just never had that in me. I... I can't understand how anybody would want someone yeah. to feel that way. But then I always looked at it like maybe, you know, some of these people, they they didn't have a privileged upbringing. But and, it had, that, you know... that may be the case, but it something like that sticks with you and it's yeah, stuck it really does. with you. Yeah, I think it's probably why um, I've gone into entertainment. It's like, oh, everyone, please like me, you know. But um, there is... Cos there is a bit of this with you. I mean, you are, like you say, you're open book, you're very yeah. honest, you're, you're a very kind person and very happy, and you want to make people laugh around you. Yeah. And yet, inside, and again, you've been very open about this, you have had bouts of depression, you have mm. had this sort of overwhelming sadness that comes on, that sits with you. Mm -hmm. And from an outsider, lots of people are quite surprised by that. Yeah, I think... I, I mean, I've met a lot of people in life that... I, f I find that people that do suffer with depression, it's often people that do have the kind of biggest smiles and, you know, cos I think... I think if, you, if you're suffering with something internally, you want to really kind of... You, you don't want to believe it almost sometimes, so mm. you, you try and show yourself in another way. And yeah. I think, yeah, I think growing up, because it was tough with everybody um, taking a disliking to me, and I, I think I looked very different and, you know, my life was very different. And I think just ever since that... You know, people always sort of say about school, oh, it's just school, get over it, you get over those things. But they actually really do stay with you, and mm. I think I've definitely taken a piece of that with me in that now whenever people are in my presence, I, I feel like it's always a constant thing that I want to remind people that I'm a good person mm. and that I'm, I'm not um, all the things that... all the 
kids at school thought. Well, I think the, and, you know... the the jungle lays people bare, oh, doesn't yeah. it? Um, you uh, you get a great insight into people's characters when you watch them. Um, on yeah. I'm a Celebrity. Oh, I loved that. I loved it so much. I, I, at the moment, I'm feeling so nostalgic about it because it's coming up to a year and I, I, I just... It, it was the best thing I've ever done in my life. And I think as well, because I was doing it for all the right reasons and, you know, there were so many reasons why I was doing it. Um, oh, and, I, I, do you know, I look back at those <laughs> things. at that real fondness yeah, thing. I, I look back at that and I'm so proud of myself. And I was so brilliant. I love that person, that person... I sometimes I have to remind myself who that person is because in the, in the normal world of you know the everyday stresses of life I can't always be that person of a carefree nine-year-old. I was like a carefree nine-year-old. Because you there. had no stress of no life, stresses, no social media, no, pressures. no nothing, no pressure. No, yeah. it was it was easy. But it you are easy. going back. Yeah. So you they get can't to, get rid of me. You, you get to do it all again because yeah. you are the new host of the ITV2 show. I can't believe it. I, I, I honestly, if you'd said that this was going to be my life, you know, sitting on this sofa talking about my book with you two, and going off and having a laugh with Ant and Deck again, like and you know and Joel and Adam, I, I just. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have believed you. It's, it, my life at the moment, I, someone described my life to me the other day. They said, your career at the moment, it's a bit like a night out and you're that girl that can't stop saying yes to one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll go on one more there. Should we do a tour? Yeah, just a cheeky little tour. Well, you're but, doing the, yeah. com the comedy tour. It's so yeah. successful. You're doing some more. It's amazing. I've, everyone's just being so kind to me at the moment and just allowing me to kind of experiment with all these different things. And, yeah, so I've got the tour. I, I'm, I'm in Stoke tomorrow. Oh, um, and, yeah, it's kind of correlates with the book a little bit. Um, I sort of I read a few chapters of the book and and then do kind of you know a bit about what I've you know just written about and hopefully people can relate to it and just realise that you know life is difficult. We, we all go through difficult yeah. things, but just come and have a laugh with me at my expense and we can all just <laughs> we'll smile laugh about with it. you. That's for sure. Well, well it was, and it's nice to see you at the Pride written um, last night. Yeah, yeah and uh, love the hair as well. You look beautiful. Thank you so much. I feel like I've got a wig on and everyone's allowing me to keep it on. <laughs> you know, like you've got a wig on You're not and you used want to keep to it, it on yet. all day. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, um, <laughs> you look beautiful. Our, our uh, deputy editor, Emma, said, uh, will you be tipsy on the sofa tomorrow? You said, no, I'm limiting myself to just six drinks. Yeah, well, OK, so... I mean, six quite... Six hunting. is a lot. Don't, not when they're <laughs> tiny little cosmopolitans <laughs> like this. Did you stick to six or did you go over? OK, I may have gone over by three. Nine drinks? Oh, that's See, that's small. what happens when you're this young. Yeah. You can get away with it. <laughs> My hangovers are still surprisingly light. <laughs> well, well, you did remarkably good for it. Thank you. Um, thank um, you very good much. Luck in the jungle. Good luck we'll in the jungle. We'll be watching. Thank you so much.